our first formative assessment of the term uh, on the very first problem we had to solve this polynomial equation right here and we were told to find all the real solutions to this equation and to justify each step so I want to demonstrate this uh, first of all notice this is a polynomial is a polynomial of third degree <clears throat> and really the the, the way that we want to think about our first attempt to solve this is to, to see if we can factor it and use the zero product property to, to find a solution. And if we're going to use the zero product property, then we've got to, our equation has got to be equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 45 from both sides of the equation in order to get it onto the left hand side and so I end up with this and I was able to do that the justification for this is the subtractive property of equality and that's what allows us to do that anytime we're moving terms from one side to the other we're typically using the properties of equality now here I have uh, are my third degree polynomial and it does equal zero <clears throat> And I'm going to, the first strategy for solving a, for factoring a third degree polynomial is to think about grouping. And you can already see that there seems to be some common factors uh, among these terms, right? A three and a three and a five and a five and of course some X's. So I'm just gonna try to group these first terms together. And then I'm gonna group the second term two terms together or the, the last two terms um, and notice when I did that I factored out a negative sign that's why this negative and this negative came outside the parentheses if I were to rewrite this again by by distributing the subtraction sign I would arrive right back where I started so I call this grouping there's a little bit of factoring going on with that negative sign but that's basically what I've done here is I've grouped these add that I group these together. Now I want to factor the groups. And so I look at the first group and I see that there's a nice x squared that can be factored out of that. And the second group, I can actually factor the 9 out. And I'm left with this. And that's useful because now each of my groups has a common factor. This x plus 5 factor appears in both groups. So I just factored the groups factored groups okay now I can continue factoring by just treating this and this as two separate terms with a common factor let me just factor that common factor out and I'm left with the x squared minus 9 and that still equals 0 so again I factor okay now, I, there's a couple ways to proceed from here. I could go straight to the zero product property and set this factor equal to zero and this factor equal to zero. That's one strategy. I can also notice that this is a difference of squares and I can factor this. It's a quadratic too, so any technique for factoring a quadratic will work. But I'm gonna treat it like a difference of squares. X minus three, X plus three. And that is the pattern that a difference of squares follows when you factor it. And I, I finally, here I say I factor completely. And that means um, I've, I've, I've factored this as far as I can and I end up with these three factors. Now I can set each of these factors equal to zero one of them or the other one or the other one equals zero and that's by the the zero product property and i can very easily solve these three linear equations with the properties of equality x is equal to negative five three or negative three that is the set of real solutions right there and I got that using the properties of equality 
and I might just put a box around my solution. There it is.